You may think that if you have a good leader, everything will just run smoothly. Actually, you've probably already discovered that's not the case. There are many predictable things that will happen where there is good leadership in order to throw that good leadership off balance. In this session, we're going to try and understand what some of those things are and how to avoid them. This guy's walking down the street when suddenly he falls into a pit. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, Hey you, can you help me out? Well, the doctor writes out a prescription for anti-anxiety medication, throws it down the hole, moves on. Well, a little bit later, a counselor comes along and the guy shouts up, Hi, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? Well, the counselor writes a note of encouragement. I understand how you feel. Throws it down the hole and moves on. Then one of the guy's friends walks by. Hey, my friend, it's me. Can you help me out? Well, the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you crazy? Now we're both down here. Friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. <laughs> so in this session, let's jump together into some pitfalls that people systems encounter and find our way out. We'll also dispel some common delusions that we often hold on to as leaders. Now, our effective leadership always underlines that triggers a number of predictable reactions among the people we lead. These situations indicate that our leadership is being effective, not that we're poor leaders. We call these situations or reactions group pitfalls or systemic pitfalls. The key to remember is that it's not the situations by themselves that are the pitfall, but our wrong reactions or wrong responses to these situations. We need to remember that a certain degree of conflict and uncertainty will always occur in any people system. The point is we don't have to allow these things to lead us into wrong or inappropriate behaviors as leaders, thus falling into the pitfalls. So when we talk about pitfalls, we're not only talking about the things themselves, but how we respond to them as leaders. Now these pitfalls happen because people simply don't like change and they are afraid of what they might lose. This means that people naturally resist good leadership, even when they suspect the leadership will lead to good outcomes, because good leadership always brings about change. If we react or respond to these pitfalls inappropriately, then we'll create anxiety and instability in our people system. We'll undermine our leadership. Our unhealthy reaction to these pitfalls will make them worse. So we need to learn to avoid or deal with these pitfalls effectively. Now, these pitfalls are dilemmas, not problems. And you need to know the difference. Problems are issues that can be solved and resolved. Two plus two equals four. It's a common problem. It has a solution. If we get into debt, there are numerous ways uh, and numerous solutions for us to get out of debt. This is the nature of a problem. Now, dilemmas are issues that by their nature cannot be solved. There are no easy solutions. The best we can do is to try to manage dilemmas while they work themselves out. Uh, climate change is a dilemma without an easy solution. A husband and wife who are having struggles relating to one another uh, are facing a dilemma. A church struggling with changing demographics is facing a dilemma. The point is this, when we have a dilemma, by definition, there are no easy answers. Systemic pitfalls are dilemmas, and they require time, patience, and creativity to work through them. Now, there are four common people system pitfalls, selfishness, sabotage, strife, and suffering. Now, ironically, selfishness will often pop up when a people system is becoming healthier. As a system becomes stronger, the people who have sacrificed or suffered for the sake of the system often want to get the benefits that they feel they now deserve. And this can lead them to selfishness. Now, selfishness is simply an inappropriate focus on yourself, uh, being self-centered, self-seeking, or self-referential. At its heart, it's the refusal to take appropriate personal responsibility 
for your own character or your own perceived needs. It's a form of immaturity. Immature people will always demand that other people give in to or adjust to their problems or their needs. Now one challenge for us is mistaking immaturity for rebellion. Initially they look very similar. However, immaturity is a dilemma people must work through as they become mature, while rebellion is a sin problem that requires repentance. If you treat immature people as if they are rebellious, then they'll become rebellious, creating an even bigger dilemma. I always suspect immaturity before I look for rebellion. Now, to avoid the pitfall of selfishness, we must model healthy self-giving as leaders. One of the greatest dangers we face as leaders is becoming selfish ourselves. We need to promote maturity by being mature ourselves, taking appropriate responsibility for our mind, our will, and our emotions. And as difficult as it might be not to focus on what is wrong, we need to focus on developing healthy and mature people in our system without giving in to selfishness. <clears throat> now the second common pitfall is sabotage. Sabotage is seeking to destroy, damage, obstruct, or hinder leaders or change. Sometimes people do this for their own personal gains, but often people sabotage things unconsciously. Now, sometimes people will sabotage leaders because of changing relationships and jealousy. You know, for example, the best friend of the former pastor is often the person who will sabotage the relationships of the new pastor. People may also sabotage leaders because of their flesh, you know, that sinful aspect of our humanity. When some people don't get their own way, they will make sure that no one else succeeds either. Or pride may make us assume that we're right and others are wrong. So we sabotage their efforts in order to get our own way. Occasionally, sabotage may be demonically inspired. Satan can whisper thoughts into people's minds that left unchecked may lead them to sabotage something. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2, we don't want to be ignorant of Satan's schemes. Now there are a number of common ways that sabotage will present itself. Spreading discontent, magnifying the potential bad consequences of doing something, misrepresenting a leader or a decision, engaging in passive aggressive behavior, uh, changing our mind after the group has made a decision, uh, putting in extra conditions in an agreement late uh, or even after negotiations have been completed, agreeing publicly while undermining something privately, spreading gossip and rumors, uh, even using bullying and intimidation to influence others. Now, as leaders, we must ensure that our being is fully grounded in Jesus Christ so that we can respond calmly, peacefully, and intentionally to sabotage. Most of the time, sabotage is successful because we allow it to create anxiety in us and our people system. To work through sabotage, we need to focus on building healthy people and healthy ways of doing things in our people system. Now, the third common people system pitfall is strife. Now, strife is just another word for friction and conflict. Basically, it describes problems within interpersonal relationships. And it's important to remember that strife will often increase as people are learning to become mature. In that sense, we cannot avoid it, but we must learn how to work through strife in a healthy manner. Now, some things we tend to do never work when it comes to strife. Trying to explain or justify our position won't help. Defending ourselves makes things worse. If we withdraw and refuse to engage in the conflict, saying, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with this, it will get worse. Blaming someone else or something else for the problem never works. Trying to placate or appease the other person just makes the conflict worse. Bargaining with the person or appealing to fairness does not work either. All these common responses will ultimately increase strife, not resolve it. So as leaders, we must ensure that our being is grounded in Christ so that we don't try to avoid strife. 
If we allow strife to create anxiety in us as leaders, then strife will create anxiety in our people systems. We need to encourage people to work through strife with love, mercy, and grace. People need to understand that strife is normal and working through it can actually promote health in a people system. We need to model appropriate responses to strife ourselves. As leaders, we can help people gain healthier respect, uh, perspectives on strife. For example, we might uh, help people understand that strife is one way that God forms our characters as people. A little healthy strife can make us more creative. The final pitfall, suffering, is essentially the collective effect of all the other pitfalls, uh, along with normal struggles and difficulties of life in groups. You know, suffering is experiencing something that we perceive to be negative or unpleasant. However, simply because we experience something as negative or unpleasant doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. Pain, for example, is a natural part of our growth and development. If we could not feel pain, then we would not be healthy. Now, various difficulties will always come up around uh, an effective leadership and leader in a system. Our willingness and ability as leaders to embrace suffering will determine the willingness and ability of the people and the people system we lead to embrace suffering. Now, suffering is one of the things the Bible promises we'll experience as Christians. So it's important as leaders that we help our people go through suffering well. As leaders, we can't avoid these systemic pitfalls. To do so, we must lead from our identity fully grounded in Christ while maintaining a calm leadership presence. It's essential that we seek fresh and different perspectives on what's happening in our people system. One thing that helped me endure the difficult times we experienced was having many friends with whom I could share in order to gain their perspective and their insights. As leaders, we can welcome conflict as normal and as an opportunity for growth. Uh, just as the human immune system becomes healthier as it fights off various diseases, so a people system will become healthier as it goes through various struggles. This means that we need to embrace suffering as part of our calling in leadership. In order to avoid falling into these pits, we must resist idealistic distortions and expectations. You know, sometimes we set such lofty idealistic, idealistic expectations for what life in church or the workplace should be like that we miss the importance of what's actually happening around us. Most people tend to assume that we face group pitfalls because we're not leading well. So it may be a bit of a surprise to discover that they tend to arise because we are leading well. What group pitfalls have you experienced?